How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another pixel platformer tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be setting up our punches. So what I have done so far is I have imported our swoosh, our slash, whatever you want to call it. I've imported that sprite. It came with the pack from Open Game Art here and I'll just double click on it for you. It's really hard to see and you can totally color this however you want. I don't know if you can even see it. It's kind of just this swoosh motion and it looks really good and you can use it for run effects something like that but i think i'm going to try to use it for a projectile and this projectile is going to be different from my other projectiles if you're in one of my courses we're going to use a very similar system but we're going to make this a very short projectile it's not going to go across the screen it's going to go stop and then get destroyed and that's because we want it to act as a punch so what i've done in our player since we last saw each other was I added two more IDs. I added a punch and a hit and you can find these in the sprite cheat guide. I believe the punch is 12, 14, 12 and then I forget what the hit frames are. They might be like 10 and 9 or 9 and 10. So definitely check out the sprite cheat guide that's included uh, and also you can find it on open game art and I believe I was wrong about the... was I wrong about something? Oh no I wasn't. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I thought I was wrong about an animation here. Maybe I was. So if I was, I apologize. If I wasn't, I'm getting confused. All right, let's go back to what I was doing. So in our player event, we're going to be cleaning this up. So let's actually do that. Let's make some groups here. And we're gonna just going to hit G on the keyboard. And we're going to say our player movement, just so we can really clearly see what's going on. I'm going to shift click all of these and just drag them in there. Same thing with our player idle, our player falling. That should be fine for our player movement. And then this can go in there as well. So obviously we can start to nest these even further and you can really have uh, more groups. In some instances in my RPG course, I've actually grouped every single keyboard movement just to make it really, really organized. But now we can actually see what's going on. Oh, wait, that L statement needs to go in there, doesn't it? Let's see. This needs to go. Come on. Drag it up and put this in there i believe there we go cool so let's make our shooting so here's how we're going to do this and shooting by i mean by punching so let's hit v on the keyboard to make a new global variable and you could do this as an instance variable it doesn't really matter so i'm going to call this num punches and i'm only give myself 15 punches i'm going to make another variable i'm going to say can underscore shoot and that'll be zero. And then I'm going to make one more variable. And I'm going to say uh, we want to call this. Usually it'd be a rate of fire. In this case, it'll be a rate uh, punches. So a rate of punches. How fast can we do this? And I'm going to put it at 0 0.1. OK, so let's start by creating this compare instance. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say double click. We're going to say system compare variable because this is a global variable we're going to say if num punches is greater than zero then we're going to hit b on this event so there's no not going to be any actions if num punches is greater than zero then if the keyboard key is down well let's pick a key for punching i'm going to pick the l key because it's opposite of our walk controls here if the L key is down, now I don't want to be able to throw a punch while I'm moving because this is a punch. This is something that is close combat and the projectile will already take care of moving forward. So we want to make sure that we're idle while we're doing this. So this is where our state engine comes in. So let's hit C on the keyboard to add another condition. And let's say if our player compare instance variable direction is equal to idle which it will be if i could type out idle it will be idle because every single tick we're setting it to idle and that means that when we're moving we can no longer actually shoot or fire a punch you'll see so if the l key is down and our player is idle and only if we actually have punches left if we have energy so we could eventually tie this into energy and the hud element if we wanted to but if all of this is true, then let's set the action. Actually, you know what? Let's just copy and paste the action from up here. Perfect. Control click. Let's set it to punch. 
and there we go. So let's see if that is working. So right now what should happen is we should be true. We, are, we have 15 punches and I'll be not moving. So let's hit play. Let's see what happens. Let's bring this over here and let's hit L. Cool. So you can see the animation's working. It's showing off the punch abilities here. And now we just have to make it show the projectile. So let's do, let's do this. Let's go to our main layout. Let's double click and let's add a function object. Now, functions in programming is just as important as anything else. And this is some, this is how we do it in Construct 2. It's a little bit weird, but once you get used to it, it's really helpful. Now you could make a separate event sheet for this, but I think I'm just going to say add event function on function and let's call this uh, let's call this punch timer and I'll do camel case for this and then we're gonna make another function just like this function create function let's call this uh, punch oops punch uh, I'm trying to think of a name here punch effect that works so what punch effect, punch effect, I can say that word. What punch effect do we want and what punch timer are we going to have? So, okay. Now these are going to be called and these are only going to be called if, let's scroll up here, can shoot is equal to zero. So it is equal to zero at the moment. So we're going to say to select our nested event and hit B to create another nested event. We're going to say if the variable can shoot equals zero, then we're going to call these functions. So let's call our punch timer first, call the function of punch timer. And then let me just control click this, double click and rename this to our punch effect. Okay, in between here, what we need to do is we need to, uh, we need to render this to one. So this no longer equals zero. So let's go system, add to can, oops, can shoot one. Okay, cool. So now when we call the punch timer first, we are going to be subtracting from our number of punches. So let's go subtract from our number of punches. And if this is not making sense to you, uh, in my other courses, I explain this in a lot of detail in my action platformer, my RPG course, and my top 10 shooter. All of this is a very similar system and it all will hopefully be uh, explain in greater detail for you there. I think this should make sense. I don't think it's too confusing for you. What we're going to do after we subtract one from our punches, so now we're going down from 15, 14, 13, 12, is we're going to do a system wait. And this is going to tell the code to just completely stop. And we want to wait. I forgot what I called it. What did I call it? Did I call it rate punches? That's what I called it. So instead of waiting one second, we're going to put in a variable there and we're going to say rate punches. So the rate of fire that the punches are going to be firing off at, which is 0.1, which you might think is really fast. It's not because you can go all the way down to 0.01 and that's really fast. So 0.1 is a good rate of fire. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set this back to zero so we can punch again. So let's say system set the value of can shoot to zero. It's already done for us. Cool. Okay. So for our punch effect, what I usually do is, and I usually use this for a projectile system, I'm able to create different amounts of types. So I could have a different uh, style of punch. I could have one punch, two punch, three punch. I could have an infinite amount. And all we'd have to do there is make a variable and call it our punch type and then have 10, 20 different types of punches, which is really cool. But in this instance, I think what we're going to do is just going to use the actions for the function here. If you wanted to see that, you can go check that out and other stuff. So what we're going to do here is we're going to spawn our slash. And now let's look at our slash real fast. And I've actually given it a behavior of sine wave. And I'm not sure if we're going to stick with that or not. So for right now, we can leave it. We might come back and put a bullet functionality on it. I'm not sure. Let's just get it to spawn and then I will see what to do from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, add the action for our player to spawn another object. And in this case, it's going to be spawning a slash. Now we're going to say spawn on layer entities and we don't have to do an image point right now. I do have an image point that I set up for it, but for right now, let's just leave it on zero and see where we go. 
And I think that is pretty much all we had to do. Uh, actually, no, you know what? I think we need to mirror this a little bit. Let's see if we can do that. Let's hit B. Uh, you know what? Let's do this a little bit differently. That way we can actually have control over this. Let's hit V on the keyboard. Let's call this punch type. This is gonna be easier too. Let's say B, and now we're gonna say if the global variable of punch type, oh, I, get, I gave it camel casing. Uh, I'll fix that. Uh, if punch type equals zero, let me just go fix that real fast. Trying to be consistent here. If punch type equals zero, then we can spawn this. And now what I can do is select this and I can have a nested event just for our punch type, which makes more sense. So if our player is mirrored, and we can also say if our player is set to left, but let's just see if this works. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set our slash angle. So let's say set angle to 180 degrees. So it's hof hopefully that'll flip and we can get that to work. So now we're spawning our slash we already have our slash in our scene. It does have to be in our layout. And if this works first time, I will be actually pretty, pretty happy with that. Let's see. So there we go. Cool. And that's our sine wave effect. So we have to fix our <laughs> sine wave. Definitely not sure if we're going to keep that in there. It definitely, it looks cool. But if we real fast, if we just disabled this and maybe we'll just get rid of it for now. We can add a bullet effect. I use a sine wave for um, uh, for the sword in my RPG course, and it works really, really well. Oh, man. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. <laughs> now we're shooting some punches. <laughs> okay, so we have some fixing to do, and I ran out of bullets. But our shooting now works, and it wasn't supposed to be shooting. It's supposed to be punching, so we're going to have to turn this down a whole lot. Maybe we'll try it. Try that bullet speed off at 15 real fast and see how that looks. Oh no, 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 no. I'm, that's not what, it, not what we wanted to do. But okay, so we're gonna do that in the next tutorial. That way we can just focus on setting up our punch and finishing it. But thank you so much for watching. And we did get to group our stuff here. So let me, or let me just real fast regroup our, shoot our punching system. I, I keep getting confused with projectiles. Player punch or punch. There we go. And let's just select all of this. So we did a lot actually. We grouped everything together. We created this punching system, which you can also use for projectiles. And we added some functions, which is really huge in programming. So I do hope that you found this really helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.